Hello, I am Sister Charlene Winston, and I'm coming to you today with our Sunday School and Weekly Bible Lesson. <clears throat> our lesson for the completing this week is Obeying God's Law, and we are going to complete our Friday, Saturday, and Sunday's lesson today. And our lesson for uh, Friday is Jesus' Precept on Anger. Jesus' Precept on Anger. And this lesson is coming from Matthew, the 20th chapter, the 21st verse through the 26th. And the scripture lesson takes read, Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall, ki sh shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in, the, in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to, the, to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Then I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the utmost for a thing. Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson we have today. First speaking on judgment. Uh, if we uh, are to kill someone, uh, they believed in the old days that it was only talking about actual murder. But Jesus clarified and brought it to light that it's not just uh, the the act of murder, it's also the thoughts that goes before the act of murder. Uh, it's also condemning to the uh, person that is uh, in this position. So our thoughts lead to things that can cause uh, murder. So those also bring us into condemnation. And also, it also speaks about uh, your gift when we uh, get bringing our tithes and our offerings into the, uh, the storehouse of the Lord, that we are to uh, make sure that we have uh, forgiven those that uh, has trespassed against us, had done wrong against us, that we have forgiven them, that we, have, uh, that we do not uh, hold animosity in, in our heart towards them. Because with these, holding these in our heart, it brings on strife and it brings more trouble. And it, and even though we may not say it, God knows the heart. So when you come in to bring your gift to the altar, make sure you have prayed and 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 ask forgiveness. And even if necessary, go to the when necessary, go to the person and ask them forgiveness. Not only asking God, but ask the person themselves for forgiveness. Uh, for uh, having animosity be, uh, uh, over them. And many times uh, I've found it to be a fact that people don't even realize that we are angry or upset uh, uh, with them. Uh, we walk away and we're thinking thoughts in our mind and they know that I'm mad at them. They know I'm upset with them. And many times they don't even realize that, that we are uh, in, in distress about something that they have said or did. So we then, uh, we especially need to go to them and, and ask forgiveness for what we uh, have done. And also he uh, speaks about uh, when you have something that uh, comes to, that can come to court, if it's at all possible uh, in your hands that you can uh, uh, ask forgiveness and, and, and rectify the matter, then it's best to do so uh, because you will end up, uh, you can end up going to jail. You can end up going to pen for doing things that you shouldn't do. And these, uh, it said you will not leave before you have paid the full debt. And many times uh, nowadays, uh, people are getting out uh, early and things like that. But many times the things that you have went through uh, is far greater and you have paid the full debt, whether you pay it in the full, in the years or not. 
I'm going to read you a passage from the uh, Believer's Bible Commentary. It says, The Jews of Jesus' time knew that murder was forbidden by God and that the murder was liable to punishment. This was true before the giving of the law, and it was later incorporated into the law in Exodus 20 and 13 and Deuteronomy 5 and 17 with the words, But I say unto you, Jesus institutes an amendment to the teaching on murder. No longer could a person take pride in having never committed murder. I ain't never killed nobody. I ain't never did that to nobody. But that's what we'll say in a hurry. But Jesus says, Jesus now says, in my kingdom, you must not even have murderous thoughts. He traces the act of murder to its source and warns against the three forms of unrighteous anger. The first is the case in, in is the case of a person who is angry with his brother without a cause. One accused of this crime would be in danger of the judgment. That is, he could be taken to court. Most people can find what they think is a valid cause for their anger, but anger is justified only when God's honor is at stake or when someone else is being wronged. It is never right when expressed in retaliation for personal wrongs. Even more serious is the sin of insulting a, a brother. In Jesus' day, people used the word raka, an aromatic term meaning empty one, as a word of contempt and abuse. Those who used this effort were in danger of the council. That is, they were subject to trial before the Sanhedrin the highest court in the land, just for saying those words. Finally, to call someone a fool is the third form of righteousness, righteous anger that Jesus condemns. Here the word fool means more than just a dunce. It signifies a moral fool who ought to be dead, and it expresses the wish that he were. Today it is common to hear a person cursing another with with the words god damn you he is calling on god to consign the victim to hell jesus says that the one who utters such a curse is in danger of hell fire the bodies of ex executed criminals were often thrown into a burning dump outside Jerusalem, known as the valley of hinnon or Gehenna. This was a figure of the fires of hell which shall never be quenched. There is no mistaking the severity of the Savior's words. He teaches that anger contains the seeds of murder, that abusive language contains the spirit of murder, and that cursing language implies the very desire to murder. The progressive heightening of the crimes demand three degrees of punishment, the judgment, the counsel, and hell fire. In the kingdom, Jesus will deal with sins according to severity. If a person offends another, whether by anger or any other cause, there is no use in this in his bringing a gift to God. The Lord will not be pleased with it. The offender should first go and make the wrong right. Only then will the gift be acceptable. Even though these words are written in a Jewish context, that does not mean there is no application today. People in Paul interprets this concept in, in relation to the Lord's Supper. See 1 Corinthians 11. God re receives no worship from a believer who is not on speaking terms with another. It is against a legitious spirit and a reluctance to admit guilt that Jesus warns here. It is better to promptly settle with an accuser rather than run the risk of a court trial. If, the, if that happens, we are bound to lose. While there is some disagreement among scholars about the identity of the people in this parable, the point is clear. If you are wrong, be quick to admit it and make things right. If you remain unrepentant, your sins will eventually catch up with you, and you will not only 
have to make full restitution, but suffer additional penalties as well. And don't be in a hurry to go to court. If you do, the law will find out, find you out, and you will pay the last penny. If not in one area, in another, you will pay the last penny. And man, our uh, Saturday's lesson for this week is Jesus' precept on lust. Jesus' precept on lust. And that also is coming from uh, Matthew, the uh, twenty, the fifth chapter, I'm sorry, the 27th verse through the 32nd verse. And the scripture lesson text read, You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if they, thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy, thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, swear not, at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Amen. I'm sorry I didn't get into the reading. I was going on. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I get into the word and I, I just get to reading. Uh, uh, the word is so uh, enthusiasm and, and it, it brings so much uh, 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 passion uh, to me that uh, it is such a great thing to, to read the word of, of the Lord and to let it uh, 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 settle in our souls and in our minds. Our lesson on uh, the uh, lust is, uh, as we were um, uh, doing our Saturday's lesson, Jesus' precepts on lust, it said, you should not commit adultery. Uh, uh, the Lord said that, you know, uh, sleeping with a person is not the only way of committing adultery. You can look at a person in 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 lust and and commit adultery. And it is all he also speaks on the on the on the fact that uh, if you uh, have uh, if you just can't seem to look away, pluck your eye out if it's necessary. If you can't keep your hands off of it, cut your hand off if necessary. And it seems like a harsh thing, whether it is literal or not. But to go to hell would be much worse. So which one is the, the is the uh, most uh, uh, worst thing that you would have to deal with, whether to go to hell or whether to uh, 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 not uh, commit adultery, not to uh, uh, lust after someone. I'm gonna read you a little passage on from the Believer's Bible Commentary. Uh, on uh, Jesus' precept on lust, it says, The Mosaic law clearly prohibited adultery in Exodus 20 and 14 and Deuteronomy 5 and 18. A person must be pr proud that he had never, might be proud that he had never broken this commandment and yet have his eyes full of adultery. In 2 Peter 2 and 14, while hourly res respectable, his mind might be constantly wandering down liveneth of impurity. So Jesus reminded his disciples that mere abstinence from the physical act was not enough. There must be inward purity. Jesus is always looking at the inward man. What is the inward man doing? How is he uh, controlling the situation? It says, the law forbid the act of adultery. Jesus forbid the desire. Whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. E. Stanley jo Jones caught this, the import 
the importance of this verse when he wrote, If you think or act adultery, you do not satisfy the sex urge. You, are, you pour oil on a fire to quench it. Sin begins in the mind, and if we nourish it, we eventually commit the act. Continue uh, and doing it one time, I ain't going to do it no more, don't worry. If you continue to do it, because just because you, oh, I got that out of my system. I went on and did that and got that out of my system. No, all that did was make you want to do it more. It said, maintaining an undefiled thought life demands strict self-discipline. Jesus, thus Jesus taught that if any part of your body causes us to sin, it would be better to lose that member during life rather than to lose one's soul for eternity. We are to take Jesus' words literally. Was he actually advocating self-mutilation? The words are literal to, to this extent. If it were necessary to lose a member rather than one soul, then we should gladly part with the member. For fortunately, it is never necessary since the Holy Spirit empowers the believer to live a holy life. However, there must be cooperation, and rigid discipline on the believer's part. You got to have a want to, to change. You got to have a desire to want to do different. It said, under Old Testament law, divorce was permitted according to Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4. This passage was not concerned with the, the case of an adulterous wife. The penalty for adultery was death. See Deuteronomy 22 and 22. Rather, it deals with divorce because of dislike or incompatibility. However, in the kingdom of Christ, whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. This does not mean that she automatically becomes an adulteress. It's, it it presupposes that having no means of support, she is forced to live with another man. In so doing, she becomes an adulteress. Not only is the former wife living in, an, in adultery, whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. The subject of divorce and remarriage is one of the most complicated sub topics in the Bible. It is virtually impossible to answer all the questions that answer to, that arise, but it may be helpful to survey and summarize what we believe the scripture teaches. The main thing is, don't do it. Stay away from it. Uh, uh, stay uh, out of uh, danger of hellfire. Amen. And our Sunday's lesson, Obeying God's Law. Obeying God's law is coming from Exodus 20, 18 through 26. And that scripture lesson text read, All the people saw the thunders and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar. They was afraid. They were scared. Uh, they see this going on and they are, are terrified. But it said, learn to fear the Lord. If we don't have a... Uh, a right, as they say, a righteous fear of something many times that we will go through with things that we shouldn't. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. They believed truly that if, the, if God spoke to them, they would die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that this fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. This is to keep you from sinning. This is to keep you out of trouble. This is why he bringing this in, in this uh, form. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew nigh into the thick darkness where God was. The thick darkness is the uh, God. There is still many things, even though we know a lot about God and Jesus Christ. There is many, many things that we shall never know, and that there will be many things that we shall know. In the, as they say in the hereafter. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon. Thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings 
thy sheep and thine oxen, and all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. We praise God that Jesus Christ came and shed his blood, that we uh, do not uh, bring offerings of uh, sheep and cows and and, and, and oxen and, and things to put on the offering and we don't ha uh, uh, put uh, have uh, things that we consider as the altar uh, that is is of uh, Jesus Christ now uh, the altar the church uh, is in our heart and we must keep it pure and clean and it said that if thou will make an altar of stone thou shalt not build it on hewn stone for if thou lift up thy tool upon it thou hast polluted it neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar that thou nakedness be not discovered uh it you did you do not use uh uh this is what the uh uh other people did uh the other nations did just to to worship their gods they they made these elaborate altars and and they and they and they made them out of gold and they made them out of silver and they made them out of wood and they made them out all different things and he said you don't use none of that anything that you use it should be as simple as possible and this was in those days these days we don't do that uh we don't uh 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 pull an altar up uh signifying unto the lord we are going to the lord in our heart and our soul and our mind that we may go forth and and do what the lord would have us to do amen i'm going to read you a, a short passage from the uh believers uh bible commentary on the uh it says after the ten commandments were given the people were terrified by the manifestation of the divine presence they were afraid they would die if god spoke to them again directly so moses became their mediator the purpose of the law of moses was to show the people their sinfulness next god graciously gave instructions for the erection of an altar reminding the people that sinners can approach god only on the ground of shed blood. The altar speaks of Christ as the weight of approach of, to God. Man could contribute nothing to the perfection of Christ, either by the tools of personal effort or the steps of human achievement. Priests ascended steps in long flowing garments might accidentally expose themselves in a manner that would be inappropriate for such a solemn occasion and speaking on this it 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 it, it brings out that uh our tools of effort and our steps of achievement does not bring us closer to god we must come to god in honest and in truth by by leaning and depending on jesus christ the one that gave his shedded blood that we have the right to the tree of life Amen. I pray that you meditate on this wonderful lesson today and y'all have a great and blessed day.